Hi, and welcome to the Modern Persian Food Podcast. We are food bloggers, Bita Arabian and Bita Nazim Kelly, and we're here to share with you the rich flavors and fresh ingredients of Persian cooking and how to incorporate them into today's modern lifestyles. We're excited to introduce you to the flavors, tastes, and techniques we use, and also our own cultural stories and perspectives growing up in the U.S. in a Persian family. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to episode number 33. I am here with my lovely co-host, Bita, and we are going to talk about Persian cucumbers today. Hi, Bita Jun. Hi, Bita. Hi, everyone. So Persian cucumbers, so refreshing, so delicious. I love it because it's actually called Persian cucumbers. In Farsi khiyar, mm-hmm. also known as cukes <laughs> for <laughs> short. Yeah, so let's talk about how Persian cucumbers are different than maybe what you see the standard cucumbers in the grocery store, the larger ones. Mm-hmm. So the Persian cucumbers are small. I've seen smaller, like they are actually smaller, super tiny pickling cucumbers, mm-hmm. minis. Persian cucumbers are small. They have a thin skin. Smooth skin, too. It's a smooth skin, right? None of the sort of ridges and bumps and stuff. They're fine to eat with the skin on, and in fact, they're nutritious to leave the skin on if you're okay with it. The skin of cucumbers, like many thin-skinned fruits and vegetables, have a lot of the vitamins and nutrients in them and provide extra fiber. So we often just leave the skins on our Persian cucumbers for recipes. So let's talk about what dishes and recipes Persian cucumbers are often used in. Yeah. A lot of times the cucumber is served in appetizers. Cucumbers are served raw. They're not cooked. And a lot of the appetizers are just really simply diced cucumbers mixed with other ingredients. So my favorite, I would say, is like the Sarad Shirazi, which is a mix of cucumbers and tomatoes and onions with lemon juice and olive oil mixed together. And it's just a very refreshing side dish or appetizer that you can eat alongside really rich stews and rice that really like brightens up the flavors and kind of gives good contrast to the meals that you're eating. I think another go-to favorite is the masochiar, and that's yogurt mixed with the cucumbers, and you can mix that with mint and a little bit of salt. I use mint, yep, to make my simple masochiar. Like you said, just the diced cucumbers. Sometimes I'll peel them, just depends. The Persian cucumbers, yogurt, and dried mint. Now, it's important to differentiate between the kinds of mint. So some mints are really minty, almost like spearmint you know, peppermint. That's actually not the kind of mint that is preferred in Mostokhiar. The type of mint is the Persian mint. We use it in dried form. I use it in dried form in my Mostokhiar. It's much milder because I have a little herb garden. I do grow different kinds of mints. And I'd have Mm -hmm. to say that Persian mint is probably the most closely resembled to a chocolate mint because a chocolate mint is more mild. Uh Uh-huh. There is also a fancier version of Mastokhiar, which we talked about in some previous episodes, that's really kind of balances out. I think it was when we talked about the hot and cold foods and digestion. Right. And how when you add walnuts and either raisins or cranberries into the yogurt with mint and cucumbers, it kind of balances it all out. It also tastes really delicious with that little bit of tang and sweet and crunch. It's really a lovely little side dish or appetizer. Yeah, that was beautiful. That's when we had MJ on the episode and we were talking about flowers. And also you can kind of garnish the yogurt sometimes with dried rose as well to add a little additional flavor and aroma to the mustachiar as well. Yeah, and you brought up the fresh, light, citrusy salad. Really simple, the tomato and cucumber Persian salad, Salad Shirazi. Mm -hmm. I meant to also differentiate how Persian cucumbers are also a bit milder in flavor and less watery. And so they lend really well in, you know, the cucumber dips and the simple salads. And they're really lovely. You can just snack on them. And and in our culture, we often do just snack on them. You'll see them on the table, washed, sometimes mixed in with a big, huge fruit platter. Yeah, I think that's a fun thing for people who are not Persian when they see it. Fruit plays a large role in, I think, Persian culture and cuisine. There's always a big bowl 
or platter of fruit, usually just all seasonal fruits, a beautiful display of fruit. And within that, there's cucumber. And so some people will be like, why is there cucumber with the fruit? Persians love their cucumbers and we'll get it. And like you said, either peel it or not peel it. The thin Persian style cucumbers, you really don't need to peel it. And with salt, it's always super delicious and you just kind of like crunch away. I think it's always hilarious. I like to take cucumbers with me to like the playground when I take my kids. And it's like, that's definitely a Persian snack to take cucumbers with you and just a little bit of salt and even on its own it's like so refreshing and cooling and delicious and nutritious little snack to have our girls are older now but i used to pack it in their lunches every once in a while and you know it was the kind of thing it was one of those very persian things that the first couple of times they were maybe shy or embarrassed like oh what am i supposed to do how am i supposed to eat this because it actually holds well. You don't have to slice yeah. it up. Right. You can eat it whole with the skin and all. But then after they got over that, okay, like, is it weird that I have a whole mini cucumber in my lunchbox? Their friends loved them. So they would actually like ask for them when they'd come over for play dates. Oh, yeah. Do you have those little crunchy cucumbers? Yeah. And it's fun to um, include them like in a crudité platter if you want to have like an appetizer or like a snack when you have people over or like, you know, your kid's friends over or something like that. They're just fun to either just slice in half or put in like long slices and just put it with some like hummus or some like yogurt. And they even have like the little cocktail cucumbers, which are basically like Persian cucumbers, just a little bit smaller. So like mini Persian cucumbers. Yeah, I mean, they're a great snack in that obviously they have very low caloric density like celery. So you can have all the baby cucumbers that you like and not spoil your appetite. So they're good that way. They have like a little bit of fiber and lots of water and enough to just hold you over until the next well-balanced meal. Yeah. I would say that they kind of resemble like a English cucumber, like the smooth skin, the long smooth shape, but obviously much smaller. So like a Persian cucumber is probably like a typical one is like about five inches, I would say in length. And a, like an English cucumber is a lot longer, but it has a kind of like the same smooth skin and the shape, just a much smaller version of that. So how do you store yours? I know that if I buy too many, mm-hmm. if I buy them in bulk, we have to obviously eat them quickly. But also if you buy organic, they do also tend to, you know, turn, get a little slimy and not as appealing more quickly. So, yeah, you know, just kind of wash them and have them out on the counter so we would see them and remember to eat them. Yeah, because you don't want those to spoil because they are pretty special. The way that I store them, I actually try to wrap them in paper towels when I keep it in the fridge. Usually it comes in a container, of probably like, you know, five or six cucumbers in a little container if you're not buying it in bulk. And then I usually just put like a layer of paper towel in there just to kind of absorb any extra moisture so that I can actually like hold on to them till the end of the week. Another way to enjoy them as a snack is, you know, not everybody cares for the skin. We have picky eaters out there. You could peel them and then you can also slice them in wedges. Mm -hmm. Just slice them the long way in wedges and put salt. And again, because they almost don't have any seeds, they have very tiny seeds. They're great to snack on and enjoy just with salt. You didn't chime in on what you put in your mastukhiar. Mastukhiar, by the way, the yogurt and cucumber side dish or appetizer is very common in Persian cuisine. Mm -hmm. And you asked me if I use mint, which I do, but what do you put as the herb or spice in your mastukhiar? To be honest with you, I actually mix it up a little bit depending on what I'm serving it with. If I'm doing like more of a traditional Persian food, I will use mint, but sometimes I like to make a mastukhiar that has dill in it and actually serve that with like salmon or some other dish that pairs well with dill. And I use dried dill or dried mint for that execution as well. Although the fresh herbs we do love to eat with our foods, but in the specific yogurt dips, it's usually with a dried mint. Yeah, so then like touching on some different versions and modernizing, most people have probably heard of the Greek yogurt and cucumber. Mm -hmm. Tzatziki. Yeah. I sometimes like to put garlic in mine. Many of the Greek versions use a fuller fat of yogurt, Uh a very creamy type. Yeah, what type of yogurt do you like to put in your mastochiar? 
I usually just get like a full fat plain yogurt. I don't necessarily always get the Greek yogurt. It's just like a, a full fat regular yogurt. And I use that for like my masochir applications and also just plain just to eat on the side like with my Persian foods. You mentioned tzatziki as a Greek version. There's also like an Indian version that's similar but a little more liquidy, a little more runny. The raita in Indian cuisine that is used like a side dish that has like the yogurt and the cucumber. So it's interesting that the different cultures all kind of have a yogurt cucumber version. It has such a beautiful aroma that like once one person has a cucumber, everyone else wants a cucumber too, because it just smells so good. Everyone kind of wants to join in on the fun. It does. And my mom growing up, she would always save the peel Uh and put it all over her face. And she was like ahead of her time because she loved to put natural things as like a home remedy or facial. And Mm -hmm. yeah, she was such a beautiful woman. And she would just save them and just put them on her face. And it was hilarious. Yeah, calm the skin down, get a little mini spa treatment in there. Yeah, making your son a shirazi. So cute. Put a couple of rounds on the eyes, make a whole mask. Oh, how fun. Awesome. So cucumber, Persian cucumber, definitely part of the Persian cuisine and culture. And we wanted to share that with our listeners. We have a Ask the Beats question from one of our listeners. And the question is, comes from Reddit. It says, how to make banging Persian food as a young, busy, working professional that does not live with their Persian family? Meal prepping strategies catered to a Persian cuisine. So that is a great question. I think that that question can be its own episode. We'll put that on our editorial calendar. But in the meantime, let's maybe give a few tips on how we can basically have some meal prepping strategies when thinking about Persian food specifically. Yeah, sure. We'll do a whole meal prep episode for sure. But how to make bang in Persian food? Well, I always think about making sure that you have the ingredients, make the list, do the shopping. And for Persian food, if you're a meat eater, you get the meat, you got to get the produce. Think about what grains you're going to have, fresh fruit and breads, yogurt, eggs. These are things you want to have in the house, your spices and herbs. Then in terms of actually prepping, the things that I prep ahead would be to cook the meat. So I often will cook chicken or, you know, a large batch of ground turkey. Those are the meats that our family eats most. I will probably usually do that sometime over the weekend. And then I can like repurpose and reuse the meats in different dishes. For myself personally, I think of the grain more like the day of the meal. So I don't necessarily cook rice for the week or like quinoa or whatever grain we're having for the week. I kind of do that on the fly. It's really easy for me to make a small portion of it. And the vegetables I'll do the day of. I usually will do either air fryer cooked vegetables or a fresh salad, you know, almost every single night. And of course, if there's leftovers, then the more the merrier, that's easier the next day. So that's how I meal prep. Soups are wonderful to cook in advance. Stews are also wonderful to cook in advance. There are so many Khoresh and Persian stews that you can cook and have for the week using an Instant Pot or whatever cooking device that you're using. What are some of your strategies, Bita Jun? Yeah, those are all really great. Like I was like taking mental notes over here because (laughs) I could always use some extra suggestions of how to get food ready for the whole week when to do my meal prep but you know having the ingredients ready to go so when you actually do want to cook it's like ready to go so sometimes like trimming up your vegetables or having that ready and I think that what you mentioned about prepping some of the ingredients first like you cook your meats first you know I think that if I had like okay the stew meat ready and then I just need to do the vegetables I could like really pull together recipes a lot faster I think that's like a great point that you don't have to make everything right that second that you want to eat it. I've been thinking about like khoresh the karafs, which is like the celery stew with mint and parsley and whatever like meat you want to put in there with onions, you know, like a great Persian trick is to actually make your piaz dal, which is like you're basically the browning of the onions because that can in itself take like up to 30 minutes by the time you chop everything and fry it slowly and get a golden color to it and add your turmeric to it. A Persian way to do it is actually batch that, like make a whole bunch of it and keep it in the refrigerator covered in olive oil 
oil or like put it in the freezer in smaller batches and kind of like add it to your recipes as you go. That's actually a great shortcut, but having some of those things ready and to just basically put it together. So like with the Horsche Karaf's example, is like you can get the celery, you can trim it up, wash it, like store celery like in a container, like vertically, so the ends are in water and that keeps it fresh and firm and ready to go for any recipe that I want to use into. And like the herbs and things like that, I trim them up, I wash them, I salad spin them to get all the moisture out of it. And then I actually wrap them in paper towel and keep it in the fridge so that when I want to have fresh herbs, I'm not like just starting to wash everything. And some of the herbs you have to actually wash a few times so it can really save time if you have them ready to go those are great tips also beans i meant to also add that when i'm making my grocery list when i'm doing my shopping i like to keep a variety of canned i don't mind opening a can a variety of beans Mm -hmm. to use for soups and stews and osh and hummus and it's nutritious sometimes we'll roast them and the other thing is potatoes you know potatoes take longer to cook so we like sweet potatoes as well not necessarily for persian food but it's nice to have some cooked potatoes to use for persian potato salad cuckoo Mm -hmm. slice them up and put them on bottom for a quick teddy egg so great question yeah awesome thank you everyone for listening i hope you are inspired to go get some persian cucumbers and munch on them and share them with your friends and until next time thank you thank you bye Bye bye-bye you've been listening to the modern persian food podcast with bita and bita thanks for spending time with us if you've enjoyed what you heard today consider telling a friend or giving us a good rating You can subscribe to our show for free on your favorite podcasting app or find us online at modernpersianfood.com or on Instagram for the recipes and information we talked about today. We'd love to hear your thoughts and see you next time. Mm